Before this video starts, I want to give a huge thank you to Adidas. They are sponsoring my meet and greet, my meetup tomorrow, July 7th. So if you're in the Toronto area, July 7th from 1 to 3 p.m., it's going to be at 277 Queen Street West. We have over $1,000 in gift cards, plus we're going to be giving away free sneakers and more. So come through 277 Queen Street West. But with that said, let's get to today's video. <sighs> All right. Is it, is it true? Are Yeezys dead? Is the Yeezy party over? Is the hype gone? Today we're going to be talking about the Adidas Yeezy Boost 350 V2 Butter. Now you've probably seen a couple other videos on this topic or on the shoe already. These came out on June 30th last week. I know I'm a bit late to the party, but I do want to give you guys my opinion, my insight, and I also want to hear from you guys in the comment section down below. So this is a discussion video on Sneaker Talk, so feel free to let me know your thoughts in the comments. The Adidas Yeezy Boost 350 V2 Butter. Now this release, this was a very, very big release. And a lot of people were very happy with what happened from this release. And a lot of people are a little bit disappointed. Now, I'm gonna talk about a couple of the different perspectives you could have on this drop and give you guys my opinion. And of course, I actually have the sneakers here. I gotta give a huge shout out to Kenji Toronto on Instagram. They did not give me the pair, but I am just borrowing it so I can actually look at them in hand and show them to you guys as well. Because this is a release I chose to pass on. I chose not to buy these sneakers. I'll give you guys a quick little 360 of the sneaker and then we're gonna get to uh, talking about it. Now at first glance, the Yeezy Boost 350 V2 Butter is a very simple sneaker. It has this sort of like yellowish tint to it. I want to say it's a combination of the Yeezy Boost frozen yellows or semi frozen yellows and the creams. It's like a nice hybrid in between. I wouldn't say nice because I'm not too crazy about it, but it is a like fusion of both of them put together. It sort of has like a light neon yellow tint to it. And so that's why I want to say it's a mixture of the two. You have a completely clean upper, no special patterns or anything of that nature on the shoe. So it's very clean, minimalistic and simple. you got the matching laces on top, rope laces, no extra laces were included. Here's a look at the Kim Kardashian booty as well, sticks out. And then of course you got the 3M piping on the booty on the inside of the booty right here. Here's a look at the outsole of the shoe. It's a shade darker, like just a tiny shade darker than the upper. And of course that's just to, you know, make it not look as filthy when you do walk around in these. And overall, if you were looking for a very minimal and, you know, clean sneaker to wear in the summer, something you can throw on with, I guess, most outfits, the Yeezy Boost 350 V2 Butter is I'm sure something you guys might've thought about buying. So I decided to pass on these sneakers just because I'm not a fan of them. I don't really like them. I'm a big fan of the creams. I'm not a big fan of the semi-frozen yellows, but I do have them. And uh, this, this color scheme for me just doesn't do it. I would much rather have the cream, the white Yeezys, versus this like off-white buttery shade of a Yeezy Boost 350 V2. Now the production numbers, the production numbers on this, I don't have the exact numbers, but I can tell you that these were heavily, heavily mass produced. I heard a lot of locations like Champs and Foot Lockers and Foot Actions, a lot of stores were getting over like 200 pairs and so many pairs were getting allocated to stores that some of these were actually sitting on shelves. You guys can check out uh, Jumperman Chris, he did a vlog where he went around checking up on stores, seeing if these were sitting. I also know a lot of people were able to buy these because pairs were being returned back to the store. Now that's like unheard of for previous Yeezy releases. People returning their Yeezys back to the store, what? Why? Well, the big reason is, is resale was a flop on these. Resale was a flop. And that is because the demand for this doesn't necessarily match up compared to previous Yeezy releases. They supplied a lot of these, but the demand wasn't necessarily there. And so a lot of the resellers or wannabe resellers saw the opportunity of getting multiple pairs at stores and went for it. And on top of that, this is basically a general release Yeezy or as general release as I can get as a Yeezy model. Now when it came to things like previous Yeezys like the Zebras or the Turtle Doves or the Pirate Blacks, if you won a raffle for that, 
that was crazy. That was like you won a little lottery right there. If you were gonna resell it, you're gonna make a good come up. But these, these people ended up winning multiple pairs of. I actually know a couple of people online and one in person in Toronto who won, I think, five pairs. They won five raffles for the Yeezys. If you were to tell me a year ago that one person could legitimately win five Yeezy raffles, Bruh. my mind would be blown. I, I would think you're just lying to me or there was some, you know, some sketchy thing going on. But no, this person won five Yeezy raffles legit and he resold his pairs. Now, resell on these is obviously not going to be as high as previous user releases because the demand for them does not necessarily match up to the supply. There's a lot of these on the market. A lot of people are just trying to do a quick sell for these. And if you're trying to sell these on stock X, if you're trying to sell these on stock X, you can, I think after the processing fees of like 9% and then 3% for whatever else, you can make a whopping 12 or like $15, depending on what state you are, depending on taxes. But at the minimum, I think you can like at least just make $10, $10 on reselling a pair of Yeezys. You can make that much money reselling candy at school in a day or like two days. Like that blows my mind that these Yeezys have next to no resale value. So taking this point back to what Kanye was saying earlier in 2017 or 2016 he said he wanted everybody to have Yeezys and this is exactly what he wanted if you wanted these Yeezys you can go out there and buy them and I mean $10 over resale is not going to break anyone's bank no one's gonna lose any sleep over $10 over the convenience of buying a pair and if you got them for retail all the more power to you. So if you were one of the people who wanted a pair of Yeezys for the longest time and you finally got a pair of Yeezys and they're the butters, congratulations, you got your first pair of Yeezys. Now, the thing is for me, I, I'm a little bit of a hype beast when it comes to this and I'm totally open to criticism or whatever you guys wanna to say to me in the comments down below. But one of my favorite things or one of the aspects I really liked about Yeezys was the exclusive factor, the limited factor, the rarity. As a sneaker collector, I enjoy having sneakers that are rare, that you know, people, not everyone can get. And I know that sounds very, very snobby and, and however you want to call it. But you know, as a collector, and this goes for a collector in basically any field, we typically, you know, like things that are limited and rare and exclusive because it sort of has like a wow factor. I remember back when the bread Yeezys came out or the previous Yeezys, like any of the Yeezys, the Belugas, the Turtle Doves, even the Zebras when they first released the first time, like Yeezys were super cool. If you saw somebody on the street wearing them, you were like, damn, that guy's got some fly ass kicks or that girl's got some fly ass kicks, that's dope. But now, now like everybody has Yeezys. And so when you see someone on the street, you might be like, okay, cool, he has Yeezys. So does my grandma. The limited and exclusive cool factor for Yeezys really, really only is applicable now to the 750s or the V1s or some of the V2s that came out earlier in its lifespan. Now this is where I wanna open it up to you guys in the comment section down below. Please let me know your honest opinion and thoughts on the Yeezy Boost V2 Butter. Were these a cop, were these a drop? How did you feel about this release? And now how do you feel about Yeezys in general? Damn dude, it just, it blows my mind. I never would have thought I'd see Yeezys being resold for a $10 profit over retail like I never thought I would have seen the day now I totally understand Adidas and Kanye when it comes to the Yeezys releasing more releasing more colorways of them with each colorway that releases it's more attention and more spotlight given to the brand now some people would say that's good because it's building up hype more people are talking about Yeezys more people are gonna want to buy Yeezys but at the same time People are saying it's losing its hype or Yeezys or Adidas is losing its hype because these are sitting and these are considered bricks now. Um, but at the end of the day, I still would not consider this a brick. I wouldn't necessarily call this a self, self shelf. I wouldn't call these a shelf sitter either. Cause when I used to work at Full Locker back in the day, um, I, I would call something a shelf sitter if it sat on the shelves for like three weeks to like four weeks. I was like, okay, this is gonna be staying on the shelf for a while. But for the most part, a lot of people are still going out to stores trying to hunt these down. Not just for their own personal pairs, but also to resell to make $10 profit after investing 220 
US into a pair of sneakers. Like, you can make so much more money reselling other things other than a pair of Yeezys, but I mean, reselling sneakers is considered really cool these days, so more power to you. Make your money however you want. So to wrap things up, no, I wouldn't call Yeezys dead just yet. The honest truth is I still think there's hype for the Yeezys. I still think when they release the restock of the creams or if they release another colorway of the V2s, I still think it's gonna sell well and it's gonna do very well even compared to any other Adidas's models. Like the Yeezy Boost line overall has a really good sell through rate compared to other sneakers that are sitting on shelves. Think about the NMD R2s or the EQTs. Those are sitting in stores in abundance. So many colorways always on sale. Now for the Yeezys, the Yeezy Boost 350V2, not like talking about the Calabasas or the 500s or whatever you wanna like, no, we're talking about the 350V2s and the hype around that. I would say the hype around these would be dead if these actually end up on sale at like a Foot Locker or a Champ. That big red tag on a Yeezy, I think that would spell the end of the hype for Yeezys. If you do want to see a review, check out the real Seth Fowlers. I'll leave his link in the description down below. And of course, comment down below your thoughts on this whole Yeezy situation. And if you bought a pair or if you bought pairs, how many did you get? And if you did make any money from reselling them, let me know how much profit you made after how much money you invested into the sneakers. Anyways, that's it for today's video. I have a Japan vlog coming up. We go to the Nike outlets in Japan later tonight on the channel. So make sure you guys subscribe with notifications on, hit that bell and a quick reminder I'll hopefully see a bunch of you guys in Toronto at my meetup the links in the description down below Instagram's at sneaker talks yay and yeah follow me there and I'll catch you guys later peace out